What's up everyone? 7 October's here with my uh, cockatiel We hear Tupac for those that know him from my uh, blog series, The Book of Seven. Uh, welcome to Nightmare on Sedgwick Avenue, my video uh, blog. For those that have been following me along, I've been posting a lot of my movie and music reviews via written content on my website, Nightmare on Sedgwick uh, dot com, which is still live. Go check it out at nightmare on Sedgwick dot com. Uh, but I wanted to revamp, as I mentioned, for those that have been following me on social media, I've been wanting to revamp it the way I do my movie reviews and music reviews to be more visual, just because I feel like that's the way that most people consume content now. So for today, I wanted to do a movie review, horror movie review, of course, um, The Old Ways. Um, so to talk about the film, it just um, dropped on Netflix like a few weeks ago. Um, I actually came across this film last year. In 2020, it came up, I think, on my YouTube suggestions, and um, I saw the trailer and I was blown away. Um, as uh, as you can see, my expectations were high by then, and as soon as I heard it was going to be on Netflix, of course, I was like super excited. I watched it, and it met my expectations. I loved it. Um, so let's get into it. So again, the movie's called The Old Ways, and actually, let me play the trailer for you guys, and then we'll go get into like the story. You guys can tell like what the story is about and everything. So I'm gonna play it, and we'll go from there. Why did you go there? I told you, it was not safe. It was a beautifully you know shot trailer, in my opinion. The man, he is her son. He helps the woman. She practices the old ways. She's a bruja. They don't believe they can let you go. They have seen something inside you. Again, I don't own this film or anything like that. It's just a trailer. Uh, I wanted you guys to get a view. I don't know what's in my food. I don't know what the heat is. You can't understand yeah, that's what you see fucking gnarly. now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die. All right. So, yeah. Um trailer i don't know I, I like i said i was blown away by it still am when i rewatch it but pretty much the premise as you can see it follows a reporter slash journalist who goes back to her hometown of veracruz mexico um to um write a report on a on the culture and um she is told by her cousin to not go to these like ruins it looks like kind of like caves but it's ruins and supposedly it's said to be cursed uh, of course she doesn't listen being a reporter um, and um, they pretty much end up kidnapping her and keeping her in that room that you saw in the trailer because they think that she's possessed by some sort of demon uh, that that's why the ruins are cursed and that's where the story gets started and it, everything unfolds from there so when I saw this, I was hoping that I was like, man, let's see how they do this because we've seen a lot of films in the past about brujería, brujas, and the whole bad rep. And of course, there's good magic, bad magic. Um, I've in my life um, have dealt with that, not me personally, but my parents. So I am a little bit skeptical about it, but I've seen it uh, for what it is. Um, and I've seen the, the bad side of it. But again, there's also the positive side that a lot of people don't talk about. Uh, but before I get into a little bit more about the film, I wanted to like mention the director and the cast and all that. Um, so the director is uh, Christopher Lender. Um, the cast is Brigitte um, Cali Canales, uh, pl who plays Cristina, the, the lead actress or the lead um, character. Andrea Cortez, who plays Miranda, her cousin. Julia Vera, who plays Luz, uh, which is la, a.k.a. La Bruja. Um, and I love that her name was Luz. I don't know if that was intentional, but Luz translates to the light or light. Um, and it's cool. I don't know if that meant like a whole thing about like, you know, Bruja being a good witch, like uh, for like the white magic. I don't know, but that's how I interpreted it. Uh, also, OG actor Sal Lopez, who plays Javi, which is La Bruja's son. Um, A.J. Bowen. And um, a lot of other great cast members. I love that it was a uh, Latino. So it's great to see um, 
the Latino cast, indigenous cast, especially in films like this that talk about um, my culture, I'm Mexican American. So it was really dope to see that. Um, the makeup effects, um, they used a little bit of CGI, I want to say, in a couple of scenes it looked like. But other than that, like the practical effects, the makeup effects were amazing, at least in my opinion. The music too, I like the fact that they played um, La Llorona at the end of the film. Um, I love that song. I first heard it uh, when I went to visit Puebla, Mexico a couple years back and fell in love with that song. It's an old song. It's been uh, so many covers of it, but I just thought it was beautiful how they incorporated that into this story. Um, like I said, the cast did a great job. At first, I'm not going to lie, Christina's character, I was kind of annoyed by her at first because I was like, why is she like, you know, being annoying? And the, I mean, the, the cousin pretty much, like I said, she warned her not to go to the ruins. And of course, her being a reporter still goes, um, ends up being chained up. Uh, kind of technically kidnapped by La Bruja, who's trying to, like, exercise the demon. Um, and I'm like, why is she, where did she even go? Uh, all this stuff. But it's cool how they develop the characters. Honestly, I really love how they develop the characters. At one point, I thought the movie was going to end and then just get, still kept going. And I was happy because I was like, damn, it's not going to end this way. And it didn't, uh, which I was happy. So then Christina's character grew on me because they show um, a little bit of why she went there in the first place what led her to um to be there in the first place like i said what motivated her character and i was like oh okay now it makes sense and I, and then at the end she became like like the hero and like a badass bruja so yeah so uh, again there's a little bit of spoilers here i'm trying not to but i just thought it was fucking dope um so spoiler right there and i'll put it in the caption too a little bit of spoilers but uh, like i said i'm trying not to because i really want people to go and see this film like I said, I really enjoyed it. I'm not going to keep it too long of a review. But again, like I said, um, the character development was was great. Um, the whole um, mythology and brujería, they did like a positive note on it. Because uh, La Bruja is actually trying to save her life and exercise the demon, which Cristina doesn't believe in demons. Um, her cousin does. It's like, it's kind of cool because towards the end of the film, you kind of see them kind of agree at the end. But Cristina is like a non-believer and Miranda is a believer of, you know, the culture and um, the supernatural and all that. So, like I said, the, the film was great. The cast, character development, the makeup effects, the music, um, just like the whole, like I said, mythology of like uh, Brujería in Veracruz. Um, my parents are from Michoacán, Mexico. And I remember hearing stories that they would tell me that Veracruz is like, known for its witchcraft and actually if you google it um it's called like the land land of sorcery or the la uh, it's like um tierra de, de brujos kind of type of thing it's what it translates to if i'm not mistaken but i really enjoyed this film honestly i can see like a universe if they decide to go that route i don't know it did kind of stay open-ended so i mean i would be down for that to see that that would be dope to have like a whole universe because they did leave it a little bit open-ended in my opinion um but again a great film about witchcraft mexican culture um i don't know it just brought a lot of nostalgia for me because i grew up watching like mexican horror films from like the the 60s like black and white films to like the 80s when they had their slasher era as well same thing as like on the American side where they were having that 80s slasher era. So I love these type of films and I think it um, it did a great job. There's like a scene, as you saw in the trailer, where they're taking some stuff out from her like stomach. And it gave me like David Cronenberg, uh, Cronenberg vibes, uh, body horror and shit like that. And honestly, like I haven't really um had a film recently that kind of made me like look away from the screen but that scene man I was like like this like the whole time when that shit was happening like I wanted to see it but at the same time I was like grossed out like in a good way uh because a ha uh, film hadn't done that in a while so I highly recommend this film hope you enjoyed the trailer for what it was um check it out let me know what you guys think like I said I really enjoyed this film can't say enough about it um I'm, I'm probably gonna watch it again I've only watched it once um, but yeah, like even like the, the cinematography, the location where they filmed was really dope and beautiful. And yeah, I recommend it. Thank you guys for tuning in to Nightmare on Cedric Avenue movie review or horror movie review. I'm going to have more of these coming, um, soon and hope you guys let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, 
if you loved the film, if you didn't and why you didn't, or um, if you're like excited of maybe like a possible universe starting from this film. We'll see. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in uh, and have a great week or weekend whenever you're watching this. Peace.